Uh, good evening, guys. Uh, very good evening to you. Good to see you back up for a long time. Um, so let's start discussing some interesting problems of sequences series which came in this year IID jam. And as you know, we discuss problems based on the beauty and uh, how we can give some food for thought. So we'll explore more than what is there in the question itself. Uh, so uh, let's. Uh, so there's a 31 question. We have already discussed problem number one of sequence and series. This is the 31st question of uh, sequence and series, and let's start discussing that. So uh, it's given here that a n is um, a geometric series. Uh, a n is equal to one by three whole to the power n, and there are four options given. And let's explore those four options one by one in very minute details. So the first option was asked that um, whether Minus one a a like minus one and whole to the power n plus one a n is convergent or not? Uh, the beautiful aspect here is that uh, when you're asked for a convergence of a series, first you should always test for absolute convergence because when the terms are positive, it's easier to check, understand because you can apply uh, like the results are easily available, okay? Now you have to understand that positive sequence ka series ka tests and the convergence is easier to understand because you can apply modern convergence theorem on partial sums. Uh, so all the results are easily available out there, okay? So for positive terms, so always check for absolute convergence when you are asked for a series convergence first. So if you observe it that this is absolutely convergent because uh, modulus of minus this is actually a n, which is given here, and it's geometric series, so it's of course absolutely convergent. So you can easily understand that even if uh, instead of one by three to the power n, if even if a n was given to be absolutely convergent, you can actually apply this result, and this is actually true for a n to be absolutely convergent series. Okay, so option A is done. Uh, let's go to option B. This is a very interesting option. Uh, so so let's see, uh, I really enjoyed, I was discussing with my students out there uh, just before the this live that how to uh, like uh, the food for thought part, I will come to that after this. Uh, so observe, let's, let's do it very um, naively in the uh, longest way possible. So if you just replace and you can understand a1 plus a2 dot dot a n, you can easily, you know, come or like form an expression of that just because it's a geometric series, geometric sequence, okay? so. Uh, a n if you take 1 by 3 whole to the power n. So here I have taken a to be 1 by 3 so that uh, uh, the, you can, like, the space is taken less. So you can see this is what is turning out to be. I hope I've written it correctly or maybe not. Um, I hope I've written it correctly. Okay. Uh, I have to check. Or maybe some constant should be there or something like that. So uh, I think it should be this. Yes. I think this should be this. So if you just change a bit, uh, you will see that it's actually essentially uh, some constant times. So let me write it down properly. I've done some mistake in this calculation beforehand. So the idea is the following that it's a times um, one by one minus a plus uh, minus a to the power n one minus a. Okay, you can just keep also um, a here and here a to the power n plus one. Uh, so yeah, if you keep it here and if you this is the nth term, okay. Now if you keep it here and if you divide by n, so here is minus one whole to the power n. If you observe it over here, you will get that if you replace a by one by three, you will get one by three by two by three, it will be half times, I guess it will be one by n. And here it will be one by three whole to the power n plus one by, I guess it will be three by two times three by two. Yeah, it will be times three by two. Yes, I hope that I have done the calculations right. If not, please check. Uh, you will get the idea. The idea is that uh, it will be turning out to be one part will be turning out to be uh, the geometric part. If I have not done the calculations right, one part will turn into a geometric part. 
and the second part the first part will turn out to be something that you know uh this summation of minus 1 all to the power n 1 by n is convergent okay you can prove it by alternating series or leibniz test alternating series tests okay you cannot prove it by this is a very important example you cannot prove it by conditional con like absolute convergence because summation of 1 by n is not convergence you have to prove by some other method so you use something called alternating series test and it goes i think somewhere to log of 2 or something like that but yeah uh, best idea is that this is convergent and this is also convergent by this geometric series this is convergent by alternating series so essentially this is convergent so this is true so naturally a question arises that here we have seen for a n to be absolute it converges uh in this case this option a to be true for just a n if it just absolute the result holds what if like what can we say about this what other questions we can ask about for about about this sequence or series if you observe it carefully if summation a n is convergent like let's ask this question it naturally comes to the human mind right if a n is non negative and if summation a n is convergent what can we say about this two series like we take the mean and each mean is a sequence okay so what can you say about this two series okay uh you will observe that let me sh uh, give you some um you know a hints that you will see this will diverge and you will see this will converge always okay and think about this. this is a food for thought problem so if you find out some idea please mention in the comments below about what you understood from this and it's a really interesting a uh, problem out here okay uh so you can use so you can use something called convergence test uh, sorry comparison test and alternating series test to prove this i'm giving you more hints the idea is that you can prove this that first one diverges the second one converges given that a n is greater than equal to c so it's super important interesting problem and idea so i wanted to share it up, uh, to you and uh, it's a generalization of this problem it's kind of really interesting and intriguing out here um what's next let's move on to the next option the radius of convergence of the power series so radius of convergence of power series or uh, summation n from 1 to infinity n whole to the uh, n x to the power n is defined by like if you you calculate l the limit is equal to n tends to infinity the n n plus 1 -th term by n -th term you use the ratio test and you will see that uh if you do the ratio test you will get mod x by 3 okay uh so now observe that uh if mod x by 3 the l is less than 1 of course it converges right by the ratio test uh like absolutely converges so you can say that mod x by 3 less than 1 kill it absolutely converges mod x by 3 greater than 1 kill it diverges but let's check at mod x is equal to 3 and since a is equal to 1 by 3 whole to the power n mod x is equal to mod x by 3 is equal to 1 kill it will diverge okay you can check that why because it will be either summation 1 to the power n or summation minus 1 whole to the power n either case it diverges so observe that for mod x less than 3 all the uh, for all uh, x like for all x mod x less than 3 it converges so therefore the radius of convergence is actually defined as 3 because it converges between minus 3 and 3 open interval so therefore we get hello shubhamaya panda uh, thank you for being on live so we get that for mod x less than 3 uh, this sequence uh, this is the the power series converges and hence the radius of convergence is 3 and not 1 by 3 so my next question to you natural question is that if an converges absolutely so here we know that summation 1 by 3 whole to the power n converges and it's absolutely convergent what can we say about the radius of convergence can we say the radius of convergence always greater than equal to 1 like just like here 3 think about this okay think about this idea and you will see that thinking and expanding the paradigm of knowledge and uh, generalizing the question really uh, evolves you as a problem solver okay you will really enjoy it so that's my that's our purpose over here in chinta so to help you fall in love with problem solving and numbers mathematics and statistics and everything and probability out there so so we get that The radius of convergence is three, not one by three. So let's move on to the third part, a uh, fourth part. It's asking that um, 
whether summation of n equal to 1 to infinity a n sin 1 by n is convergent or series or not. Again, you first check absolute convergence, as I told, because it's easier to check. And observe that by absolute convergence, if you take more of this, and you use comparison test since sign uh, this is less than equal to 1, this whole thing is turning out to be absolutely less than equal to a n, and a n is positive here. So you can see that mod of a n sine 1 by a n is actually is less than or equal to a n. And you know that a n is absolutely convergent. That is, since it's geometric series, so this is actually absolutely convergent. So observe here that we are only using the absolute convergence, not the specific form of geometry. In none of the questions, you can actually, if you prove this part of B, sorry, yeah, you will see that in none of the questions, we actually used the absolute, the geometric form of 1 by 3 whole to the power n. Rather, we used the idea of absolute convergence and, uh, yeah, the mainly the absolute convergent idea, yeah, and the positive value. That's it. The absolute convergence idea. That's what we mainly used. So this is the beauty of problems out here that you can actually extend this and get some interesting uh, inside views. So yeah, so we got that finally A, B, D are, are the correct options and C is not the correct option out here. Okay, so I hope this uh, we have uh, done extensively with problem 31. Let's move ahead to problem 41, the another sequence and series problem. This problem is relatively easy and interesting too. Um, so it's asked that if n is a real sequence and the sequence is defined like this, five, like, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and uh, this goes on. So ask about if this is a sequence, and what is a limb soup and limb imp, and add it up for numerical purposes. But essentially, the problem is asking, what is the limb soup of the n and limb imp of the n? So, so I must tell you this before I move ahead, is that limb soup is kind of, of a sequence, is kind of the largest limit a subsequence of that sequence can get to. Okay, it's on the supremum, but it's the largest subsequential limit. Okay, as you know that if a series sequence is convergent, all the subsequence must go to the same limit. But what if the sequence is not convergent? Then the subsequence is there the existing, if the sequence is bounded and not convergent, then there will be existing subsequences which go to two different limits, right? So now take all the possible subsequential limits. There will be a maximum of it, there will be a minimum of it. The maximum of it actually intuitively it's called limb soup, and the minimum of it is intuitively called limb imp. So how do we define it? Limb soup is defined as the following way, in the following way. Limit supremum of this and limit infimum of this, which is really interesting. And let's check it out here and observe that since what I told over to you in, uh, just a few seconds before that limb soup is a plausible maximum subsequential limit. And limb is a plausible maxim, minimum subsequential limit. Observe here that if you take this 5, like 1, 6, 11, this sequence, it goes to 2. The subsequent, that subsequence goes to 2. That is A of 5m plus 1. That subsequence goes to 2. And n is always between 2 and 6. And similarly, the, subse the subsequence uh, 4, 9, 30, uh, 14, all this goes to 6. The subsequence, this goes to 6. So, in some sense, there exists two subsequence which goes to the supremum of that sequence and the infimum of the sequence. Okay? So, from that idea, you can say that maybe it's actually limb soup is 2, uh, limb soup is 6, and limb is 2. But let's prove it, um, you know, by mathematical means that let's define, like, let's see this and observe that supremum of n and n greater than equal to n so you keep this capital n fixed let's say n is equal to 7 so after that the supremum is always exists a 6 right because 1 2 3 4 5 6 are recurrent so the supremum is always 6 over here okay because it's recurrent in nature it's like you know it's rotating the terms are rotating the supremum is always be 6 and the limit of 6 will be 6 similarly the infimum will always be 2 in this Whenever you fix this n and uh, you know take the infimum of the sequence, there will always be a 2 there, okay? So you will see that the, the infimum will always be 2 and limit of that 2 will always be 2. So the, the intuition is actually working out here that the maximum subsequence is going towards 6 and the minimum, subsequent, the minimum limit of subsequence is going is 2. So this is the way of expressing 
the mathematicians thought out here in terms of uh, limb soup and limb. So now my question ending question to you, the food for thought question to you is the following, that if n is a sequence and the maximum of the sequence, the supremum of the sequence is m and the infimum of the sequence is small m. And if there exist two subsequences of that sequence that goes to the maximum, the supremum, and, and the subsequence goes to the infimum, the small m and capital M, like this. Then, my question is that, prove that the limb sub is capital M and the limb is capital a small m. That's very intuitive, the way I have told you, because limb sub is, I'm telling you, repeating once again, limb sub e of a sequence is the maximum possible subsequential limit. It's a maximum limit of subsequent of that sequence can converge to. And similarly, limb inf is the minimum limit a subsequence of that sequence can converge to intuitively. So therefore, this result seems to be intuitively true. Now your duty as a, a student is to prove this and show the work. So if you want me to check your work, or if you want Chinta to check your work, you can uh, write a solution in your Google, uh, in a pen and paper, upload in your Google Drive and share the link of the Google Drive in the comments. We will check that and give you feedback from the comments, okay? So all the best. Try out the food for thought questions as we have told you, uh, as we have shared in the video and all the best. And I will see you in the next video. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments. And also if you're looking for some courses to prepare for ISIM, SADA, IIT, Jam, other course, you can check the description below. We have some courses that if you need it, you can check them out. All the best guys. Very good night to you. I will come back soon with some new interesting problems. Good night. Stay tuned and stay blessed. Bye-bye. And if you like this video, do share, subscribe, and share to your friends who really need it and who want to solve problems, better problems. That's it. Thank you, guys. Stay tuned and stay blessed. I will see you in the next video soon.